So it's Martin Hamilton from DISC here. I'm going to say a few words to you today about something we're calling Education 4.0. But what does that even mean? Well, it all starts with a concept called the Fourth Industrial Revolution, which was coined by Klaus Schwab, who co-founded the World Economic Forum. And Klaus Schwab essentially says, we're at a time when computing capacity has been commoditized. Tiny computers, access to the cloud through pervasive connectivity. And that makes a whole load of new things possible. New industries or whole new technologies that are founded on having that pervasive computing, pervasive connectivity. But what we're interested in at JISC is how does that affect teaching and learning? How does it affect research? How does it help institutions to function? So today I'm going to say a couple of words about teaching and learning. And really we see that this whole industry 4.0 agenda, um, it kind of affects institutions in a couple of ways. One is we're preparing learners for these industry 4.0 careers, professions, vocations. Um, but there's also an opportunity for institutions to embrace these technologies, embrace things like artificial intelligence, to transform the way that they work, transform perhaps their whole concept of themselves. So we think that these two aspects of, of Industry 4.0 are very interesting. And we think actually it makes sense to look at them as what we'll call Education 4.0. So it's a transformation of what people are taught and the new uh, careers and opportunities that open up as a result of it, but also a transformation in the, what it means to be an education institution, perhaps quite a profound transformation. Um, we looked at a few scenarios. Here's one to begin with. Let's, let's picture, we'll call it the Netflix University. And, and in this scenario, universities really aren't much more than content providers. They're things that you can switch from one to another very easily. And they're more like kind of learning hotels and concierges. You might say, well, I'm not really getting on with Netflix University, but you know, the switching costs are marginal. Maybe I'll try Amazon Prime University. Um, not sure that that's a situation that really does anybody any favours. What would be a scenario that's actually maybe a little bit more appealing? Well, what about learning that's truly immersive and interactive and responsive to student needs? So we think that Education 4.0 could be a dystopia, but what we want to do is obviously everything we can to make sure that it's successful and helps to prepare learners and institutions for the fourth industrial revolution. So how could that work? What would that look like? Well, we think that there are a few big ideas that are quite helpful when we're thinking about these concepts and might help to ground some of the conversations. So for example, what happens when we take blended learning, which a lot of people are now successfully practicing, what happens if we take that to the point where it is the norm? And um, what happens if we don't have the sage on the stage anymore? We've got a few of these big ideas that we've created as talking points. I'm going to say a couple more words about that particular one, the end of the sage on the stage. And for me, uh, there's kind of an inflection point that happened at our Digifest event in 2018. And we had um, Shafi Ahmed talking about how he uses immersive technologies to teach his medical students. And if you've not seen uh, Shafi talking about this stuff, well, it's really quite impressive. The way that he works is to give his students kind of view through his eyes. What's he seeing when he performs surgery on a patient? What's that look like through his eyes? And Jaffe walked us through um, how he's taken that idea 
and moved it along several steps. So we're not just looking at the surgeon's eye view of an operation being performed. Now we're also at the point where we've got uh, multiple experts effectively being teleported in uh, alongside the medical students and the experts can have a debate about what they're seeing, what it makes sense to do next. Perhaps there's an anomaly, perhaps this patient's presented with some complications. And the medical students get to be on the sideline of what's potentially a, a global immersive conversation. And we're a long way, at that point, we're a long way from uh, standing up in front of a couple of hundred students at a lectern, maybe on a stage. You're really in the operating theatre. You're looking over the surgeon's shoulder, you're looking through their eyes. And all of a sudden, the, the depth and breadth of that experience, so the nature of the teaching and learning, really changes. We think that there are a few more of these big ideas which we'll be talking about over the coming weeks and months. What does it mean? Well, it's not about technology taking over. It's not about a kind of technocratic um, vision of the future. It's actually all about putting learners in the driving seat. It's about giving learners the opportunity to steer their learning. And it's about using the technologies, particularly using technologies like artificial intelligence, to make the education experience much more personalized and adaptive. And that's quite fascinating because it means that no two learners necessarily take the same pathway through the curriculum. And this changes so many of the things that we take for granted. So we think this is all very interesting, but of course, it's always interesting to talk about things. Um, what can we do about it? So we started to look at how we might actually deliver on this emerging vision for education 4.0. And we think the JISC is really um, ideally placed. JISC is perfectly placed to play a, play a catalytic role in all of this, because we sit at the intersection of not just IT and library services, not just the e-learning or tell community, the edtech industry, but also senior leaders and policy makers. So we're at the nexus here, and we can use that to great advantage, we believe, to help the UK, to help our members, and to help the teachers and learners at our institutions. And the vehicle that we've chosen to do this is our R&D programme. And this autumn, we're launching a new version of our R&D programme, which we call Co-Design Labs. You're going to hear a lot more about this, but the idea of Co-Design Labs is essentially that it gives us a way to iterate quickly around ideas. So we can take ideas and turn them into prototypes very quickly and then see which ones are promising, which ones we could take forward. And we're trying also as part of this to be much more proactive in how we engage with members and the wider community so that people know what we've been doing. So again, you'll be hearing a lot more about Co-Design Labs. So that's enough from me. It's a whistle-stop introduction to how we're starting to think about Education 4.0. I'd love to talk to you about it. Why not drop me a line, get in touch, and let's chat some more.